by this movement of the water. So here we have the want want Hoff formula which really says that osmotic pressure equals CRT concentration and then the temperature and gas constant. We do not really care that much with those things but what is important here is that the osmotic pressure is related to the concentration and we are talking about 1 osmol being 6.02 multiplied by 10 to the power of 24. So according to the want house formula if you do all those calculations which I am not going to be doing over here what that says is that 1 mole of a substance causes the water to move with such a pressure that it is equal to 19,300 millimeter of mercury. So if you are measuring here it is going to be saying 19,300. So that is the amount of pressure which will be generated when one mole of a substance is present here and water is trying to move. So the amount of pressure exerted on this membrane is going to be 19,300 millimeter of mercury. Now in practice one mole is too big a number. So usually we talk about milli osmoles, one thousandth of a mole. So one milli osmole, one milli osmole, if one mole has the osmotic pressure of 19,300 millimeter of mercury, then how much will be one thousandth of that? 19.3 millimeter of mercury. Okay, so do not forget this, this is a very important concept which we are discussing and I have seen so many students and doctors confused about it. Let us quickly recap what we are talking about. Number one we are talking about osmosis, osmosis mean movement of the water from the higher concentration towards the lower concentration that is one. How do we get the water in that situation that it has higher concentration and lower? You put some solutes on one side, you put a semi permeable membrane, you put the water on the other side, water is going to go from higher more volume side to the lower volume or higher concentration to the lower. So that is one. This is a concentration phenomena, osmosis is a concentration related phenomena. It does not care for the sizes of the particle, so one albumin and one sodium would exert the same osmotic pressure. It is not charge related, it is not shape related, it is not size related, it is related to the concentration. So if it is related to the concentration then we said that we should have some way of measuring the concentration. So the way to measure the concentration we have is to way to measure them in moles. What is a mole? A mole is 6.02 multiplied by 10 to the power 24 uh, number of some something. So if there are 6.02 multiplied by 10 to the power 24 people that would be one mole of people. If there is 6.02 multiplied by 10 to the power 24 sodiums, that would be one mole of sodium. Luckily, people who have been working with the elements and in the chemistry, they have measured the, the atomic weights of substances. So sodium 22.9 gram contains one mole of elements or ions. Similarly, the chloride is 33.5 and so on. Now what we were trying to first we understood what is 1 mole, then we said that 1 mole when it is present in water it would exert the force of 1, it would exert the force of 19,300 millimeter of mercury that is the osmotic pressure generated due to the presence of a mole of a substance in, in 1 liter of the water, 1 liter of the water. Okay. So how did we calculate that? that is dictated or told to us by Wandt Hoff, he has a formula that the osmotic pressure equals CRT where C is the concentration of the particle, R is the gas constant and T is the temperature. So I am not going to go in the detail of that, neither can I go at this time, but the, if you resolve this formula you see that 1 mole of a substance, any substance 1 mole would exert 19,300 millimeter of mercury. Why any substance? I keep repeating because it is the concentration related phenomena it is not weight size or shape. So one mole of anything has the same concentration and the result will be the same amount of pressure. Now this is too large a number to usually handle in our day to day uh, organic chemistry and physiology and pathologies or pharmacology. So normally the numbers are expressed in milli osmoles. So one milli osmole is one thousandth of a mole which is about 19.3 millimeter of mercury. 
So, that means if I said that inside a cell, I am just making up inside a cell there is 1 milliosmol of potassium. That will mean, so inside a cell there is 1 milliosmol of potassium that would mean that there is 19.3 millimeter of mercury pressure experienced on the cell wall by water, the water is trying to exert this much pressure to go in the cell because of the presence of this 1 milliosmol. Well, if the membrane is permeable, then it is going to go in. But if it is semi permeable, semi, semi -permeable is also for the water, so it would go in. But if it is not permeable, then the pressure will be exerted, but water will not be able to get in, right. So, non permeable it would not work, semi permeable it would mean water can move, other things can normally not move, and permeable means everything can move or the solutes can also move. Okay, so, now we have understood what is a mole of a substance, what is molarity or osmolarity. So, when one mole of a substance present in a, in a, in a fluid, we call that to be osmol instead of a mole. Then we connected that to the osmotic pressure. So, we understand that 1 milliosmol has 19.3 millimeter of mercury osmotic pressure. Now, the other two important things are what is osmolality versus osmolarity. So, just to clarify in your medical field normally and mostly you will be talking about the osmolarity instead of osmolarity. You can practically ignore osmolality, but for us as we are studying we just want to know it quickly. What that means is if you have a mole of a substance in a kilogram of solvent then that is called that measurement is called osmolality osmolality, but if the same thing is measured. So, let us say we have some mole of a substance mole 1 mole 2 mole whatever in the measured volume which is in liters instead of kilo, kilometers. So, the solvent is measured in liters then it is called osmolarity. And frankly, it is easier to measure liters. For example, if you pick up some blood, you can actually pull it in the syringe, and the syringe can tell you how many milliliters. But instead of putting that in a weighing scale to say how much kilograms or how much milligrams or how much grams, so it is easier to see the liters. And frankly, within our within our fluid systems, within organic uh, systems, the difference between liters and kilogram is so negligible that we can just use liters. It's easier to measure. So, we do not use osmolality measure, we use osmolarity, although even if you encounter osmolality, you can treat that as osmolarity. So, that is the difference between osmolality and osmolarity. And now, let us do a fun thing. Let us see how do we actually measure the osmolarity of a, of a solute. So, let us say you must might have heard this. 0.9 percent sodium chloride solution, right. So, it is a very common uh, saline solution present out which is uh, given to people in hospitals 0.9 percent sodium chloride. It is also called isotonic solution, it is also called normal saline solution. What is that solution? What is the osmolarity in there? So, let us see. The first thing uh, I would say that at some point we would also see 3 percent sodium chloride and what would that mean? This is a very common thing which we talk about and basically our body fluid extracellular fluid osmolarity is the same as this. So, when we calculate this that is going to be the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid as well that is that's, that's cool. This 3 percent is really not the normal osmolarity this is greater, but just for the kicks we will do that too. So, let us say 0 0.9 percent sodium chloride, what does that mean? That means 9 grams of sodium chloride, 9 grams of sodium chloride in 100 milliliters of fluid, that is what this means. So, the first thing is to understand 100, it is percent, 